couple named Suhaila and Farooq, and they were married romantically. They loved each other very much. The call of jihad is made, Farooq has to take off and disappear. He leaves her a little bit of money, about 3,000 dirhams, and says to her, make do with this for three months, I'll be back in three months. There's a treasure chest of 30,000 dinars, which is equivalent to two million pounds in his house, and he says to her, don't touch that, it's Amar. I'll be back in three months. When he was going, he thought twice, he looked back, she pushed him out the door, said, have you no fear of Allah? Seek the Jannah and I'll see you there in Jannah. She was a righteous woman. She pushed him out, said, go, and he went. Three months went on, six months went on, nine months went on. In that time, she found bearing with a child. A year went on, she gave birth to a boy. No sign of love. A year and a half went on. Two years went by, two and a half years went by. Some man came back from battle and said, I saw Farooq fall. Now she knows he is dead. And so now she opens the treasure chest of two million pounds. Until then she obeyed him, didn't touch it. Thirty years go by. She's looking after this boy. She's had a son. She's looking after him. She's paying for his education. Thirty years go by. Now we're in Medina. This happened in Medina. Anyways, we're on the outskirts of Muslim lands. We're in China, on the borders. Back down onto the earth. Nighttime, fire camp. Army soldiers defending the borders of the Muslims. And amongst them is a man sitting on the bridge, protecting the soldiers while they sleep. And he's having a lookout. Looking up at the stars, the sky, he's feeling a bit romantic, and he's feeling a bit of love with Allah, and he's thinking, he's thinking, all of a sudden he remembers, he has this wife he was married to. I wonder how she's doing. What happened? Did she marry on? Did she die? Did she move on? Is she there? Thought starts going mad. He marched on and on, and he was never killed in battle. 30 years, this guy's still alive. It's Baru out on the outskirts of China. He's older and he's wiser and he's just not that young, passionate man anymore. He's thinking, my wife, my wife, my wife, that's it. He takes permission from his commander in the morning, hops on his horse from China, he's riding like the wind all the way back to Medina. The closer he gets, his heart is thumping, man. What if she's not alive anymore? What if she's married again? All these things are driving him insane. He gets to the city of Medina. He remembers the sunnah of the Prophet He's a righteous man. He doesn't just go home. He goes to the masjid to pray his two rakah. Because that's what you're supposed to do when you come back from a trip. He went to the Masjid Nabi, prayed to the Kah, saw it was time for Asr, thought what's the point going home, I'll wait, pray Asr, and go home. While he's waiting, he notices the scholars of Medina. Keep in mind, this is the time of Abdul Aziz, subhanAllah, the ulama, the knowledge, Allahu Akbar. And they're sitting in different patches and people in white gathered around them. The scholars looking beautiful, mashallah. One of them shined out out of all of them, Shaykh Abdul Rahman. He was one of the best knowledgeable people you can imagine. Shaykh Abdul Rahman is the most eloquent of speakers. He's amazed by him. Adhan, Asr Salah is finished now, right, going home. He's rushing home. Soon as he gets to his house, when he gets to his house, he notices another man going in. And he's thinking, what's happened? And he flips out. He's an Arab, got jealousy. He said, hey! And he goes to the man, he grabs him. This is my house, this is my house. They get into a fight. The city comes in, people gather around. They're like, hey, leave him alone, it's his house. And he's like, I am Farooq, this is my house. Inside the house is an old woman. And she's sitting there. And she hears the sounds. Could it be? No. <laughs> She covers up, she runs out, and she sees him, she shouts, This is my husband, Farooq, leave him alone. People began to weep. They realized it's happened. Farooq and Suhaila embrace in love. And they're together, and they're telling stories. They run inside. Now they're laughing, they're joking, they're crying. Everything's coming out. Oh, Farooq, I'm so much older than when you left me. I was young and beautiful. I don't look like that. And he says to me, Sahela, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. Because he loves her piety. Because he loves her piety. And he's in madly in love with her still. And he's there embracing her. And they're weeping together. Finally, Farooq starts to get to his senses and he goes, Oh, Sahela, there was a treasure chest I left. With <laughs> two million pounds in it. 30,000 dinars, what happened? So Hela said, Farooq, let me ask you a question. Did you go to the masjid? She knows he did. Yes, I did. Did you see anything? Amazing scholars. This time has changed. 
the knowledge of the deen, the way it's being spread. Did you see anyone in particular? One really stood out. What would you give to be that man? I would give anything to be that knowledgeable. Would you give 30,000 dinars for it? Yes, I would. What if that was your son? And he said, even more. And he said, that's your son, Abdurrahman. His son was the best scholar of Medina because it was halal money and she spent it all instead of shopping online. She was raising her son in the best Islamic education. Two million pounds she spent in that time. That much money. She said, that's your son. Photo goes mad. He comes out the house screaming, Sheikh Abdurrahman is my son. I am Photo. And he's just dancing. You know, he's excited. Abdurrahman comes. They call him. They say, what? Where is he? And the man says, I'm Sheikh Abdurrahman. And when he sees him, he realizes the man he was fighting with in the beginning. He was going to his house. That was his son. And he hugs him and he embraces. And the city comes and sees this father jumping up for joy. My son is no ordinary boy. He is Sheikh Abdurrahman. And everyone starts to weep. Everyone is emotional with him. And one of the people that wept, that came to stop the arguing in the first place, was the great Imam Malik. What was he doing there? Imam Malik was the student of Sheikh Abdurrahman.